Welcome back to the workbench, everyone. This is Matt with House of Vacuums in beautiful Lynchburg, Virginia. And uh, we're going to go through a shark today. But before I do that, I wanted to let you guys know we're getting a lot more video views, which is fantastic. We love to see the channel grow. That's our ultimate goal is to get more information out there about floor care for folks. Uh, but the one thing I have noticed is most of our people who are watching are not subscribed. So if you would just pause this for a second, take the moment to subscribe and click the bell, we would greatly appreciate it. Now onto the vacuum. All right, so we have a Shark Duo Clean here. It's the Liftaway model, which is their, their cheaper model. Now what they're saying is happening is that the red light, boom, brush roll indicator is coming on and then the vacuum is shutting off so we're going to go ahead and take a listen they thought it was clogged but typically with a clog you're not going to see that light come on um, that's typically with a brush roll issue so let's take a listen and see what might be uh be going on here All right, so after a quick run, what I'm noticing is that the light is lighting up green. I don't hear any bad noises coming from the nozzle itself. Um, both, uh, the, both the fuzzy and the main brush roll are turning fine. It does not sound like it's clogged. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this guy. We'll poke around a little bit and see if there's anything else that we can find that might be going wrong. So let's go ahead and pull off this lift away. So let's take a look at the nozzle first. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pop these two tabs, which is going to reveal for us the, um, which is gonna reveal to us the uh, window area. Now this is a very small system. This is our compact system. In terms of width, the brushes themselves really only cover about eight inches, about eight inches. So it, it's, it's relatively small in the grand scheme of things. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to check this out, see if this is rolling okay, see if there's any obstructions. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy out. This is pretty filthy. So to take this out, we just pull this tab, make sure that this end is turning free, which it is. So no issues there. Now again, when I roll this by hand, let me just pop this back in so I can show you. When I roll this by hand, everything appears to be connected. I don't feel any major issues with the Duo Clean system. So again, in order for that thing to turn off, what you would need to be looking at is potentially like a like a stripped belt or a frozen brush roll with hair in the ends. And that's not what we're seeing right here. Um, now this unit is not one of the units with the Zero M technology, which is their anti-hair wrapping uh, comb. So there's no comb right here, uh, here on the hood. It looks like this has gotten chewed up pretty badly though. You can see how that's gotten pretty uh, brutal. I don't know what would do that. I really don't know. <laughs> it looks uh, pretty battle-worn though. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we are actually going to take this guy apart. little plug right here and that pops out and there's a screw right here which gives you access to the belt system so we are going to take this off
so one side off. So here is our drive, and this is a serpentine belt for the brush roll. So everything on this side appears to be normal. I don't see any cracks with the, um, I don't see any cracks in the uh, drive mechanism here. Um, everything appears to be working properly. There was just a little bit of hair in there, but I don't think that that would have caused the issues that we were seeing with the, um, the issues that we were seeing with uh, the red light coming on or that they were seeing, I didn't see it. But let's go ahead and take the other side off in the same manner. Other side is off. And over here, for whatever reason, we have a cog belt. Um, and this appears to be, there's more resistance on it because it's attached to the, um, to the main drive, but it doesn't appear to have any issues with the belt or either of the gears. And you can see here on this side, you've got metal gears, which is a good thing, even though your drive engagement itself is plastic. So let's take another quick look down inside here. So what we got here is we have a, um, a whole mess of stuff. So what, what, how does this work? So we've got our circuit board control here that uh, monitors the motor, monitors the brush roll to make sure that it doesn't get jammed. And if it does turn that off, it's also sending, it's like a power buck module for the headlights, which are LED. Um, you've got your upright on and off switch right here, which turns the power nozzle on and off when you put the vacuum upright. Very known problem area for sharks. So how does this drive system work? Well, it has one single motor for both brush rolls. What you've got here is you've got um, a serpentine belt which runs to the brush roll uh, itself. Then the power comes through the brush roll and this is a power takeoff from the brush roll to the um, to the fuzzy brush roll, to your bare floor brush roll, which is um, like, a, like a power takeoff. So the two are intertwined. Um, then you also have a micro switch right here, which prevents you from running the machine without the hood on, uh, without this piece on. So that's what that is there for. So all in all, looks like it should. I don't, again, see any major issues. And we ran it. The brush roll feels free. I don't see any hair wrapping down in here. If it did, this vacuum would be toast. So the deal with Shark is that you can contact him to see if you can get parts. Chances are, if it's not covered under warranty, they're going to uh, tell you that they can't fix it or they're going to try to get you to buy an entirely new power nozzle if those are available because the brush rolls have end caps that are press fitted onto the machine. So that it's press fitted onto two posts. You can't take them apart. Once you do, you can't get them back together. So that's the story with them. So going to take a quick peek at this motor here. There's a fair bit of carbon dust here. And oh yeah. Yeah. That's our problem. That's why it's turning off. So you can see down inside right here. There's copper over on this side, copper, 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 and then you see these burned areas. Okay, that is the commutator for the brush roll. There is voltage running across from one carbon brush to the other. It is that charge which magnetically rotates this armature within the motor itself, so uh, as part of the magnetic field. Oh, come on, focus. So what has happened, oh yeah you can see how burnt that is. And then you get back around to copper. So they've got a pretty significant section of this motor that is bad. Um, so that's, that, um, that's why you're seeing like all of this carbon dust buildup. 
that is straight off the motor and that's not normal for a vacuum of this age. So what it's doing is as it's bur as the armature is burning, it's actually um, as the armature is burning, it's actually prematurely wearing those carbon brushes. Um, which are like like a carbon slash graphite slash car, uh, copper impregnated material, which both conducts electricity and provides lubricity because there's a lot of friction there. Um, but in this case, uh, just bad motor. And we see that a lot with these cheap Chinese motors. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe that we're going to be able to get anything to replace this. Well, I know we can't get the motor. We can check with Shark using the model number to see whether or not that's something that we could, uh, the customer could order from Shark. So let's check on that real quick and then I'll be right back. So I double checked the Shark website. You can't get the you can't get the motor. You can only get the nozzle assembly, and you can get that for the sum of eighty nine ninety five. So uh, that is something that is still available from them. It does look like it's in stock, but you have to buy the entire nozzle assembly. You cannot buy parts. The only part that you can buy from the nozzle assembly is the soft roller or the lid uh, for the brush roll. Everything else is just part of the main assembly, and you have to replace the whole piece. At this point, my my recommendation would be don't fix it because it's not worth your time or your money and um, you know given that these are problem riddled machines anyway uh, you know you're gonna put money into it and then end up with a problem later on as well but the reason why we were seeing the brush roll turn on and work okay I smelled a little bit of something burning but I didn't think much of it but the reason why it turned on and was running okay is because the brushes were arcing, but they weren't getting hot enough yet to spike the amperage and turn the brush roll off. If you ran this vacuum for 10, 15, 20 minutes in some medium pile carpet, it would absolutely shut off because it would start drawing too much current uh, because of that arcing and the circuit board would shut it down. So that's what they were seeing and, and why they have the red light turning on with the nozzle. Um, so that would absolutely have caused that issue. So if this is your vacuum, there's only really a few things that you can do on it. Um, these are really not designed to be user, user serviceable. Even as I pointed out, there are security Torx bits on it, meaning that you're not going to be able to get into this without buying a special set of Torx heads. Um, so really, you should never really have to get into it this far. If the nozzle stops running for any reason, it's probably either the motor or the circuit board or this switch back here or this switch over here. So in any of those cases, if it stops running, you can't get those parts, so you might as well just chuck this and replace it. You can get the micro switch. This is a pretty much off the shelf part, so your vac dealer will probably be able to fix that for you. Um, but in terms of maintenance, we saw this guy. Now these get super, super dirty. You can see this guy here, super gross. Um, and so when these guys get grungy, you want to wash them off using like dish detergent. Wait 24 hours after wringing it out to use this and put it on the machine again. When you do that, you are going to want to put a drop of oil in here. I wouldn't submerge this piece, this end cap. I would just get it as close to the top as you can when you're scrubbing it. This end is fine to get wet. So that's this guy. And you can buy replacements from Shark for these if they get too bad. And then you've got your brush roll right here when you take the hood off you can get in here and clean but again you cannot you, you want to stay vigilant about this because you cannot get down into these ends to uh, take hair out of them once hair is in there it is in there for good and it will eventually ruin the brush roll which as I just went through you can't get the brush rolls for these you have to buy the entire nozzle head and it is almost never worth it unless the vacuum is literally almost brand new i'm going to talk to these folks see if maybe they'd be interested in something that might last them a little longer next time uh because this didn't last them that long so in any case uh I really appreciate you watching. Of course, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. As I said before, please go ahead and subscribe. We really appreciate any uh, subscriptions that come our way. And of course, we will see you in the next video. Thanks.